Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be going over both the early uh, and main slate on DraftKings for Wednesday, uh, June 20th. We have a 7 game early slate today and a 7 game main slate. Uh, we'll cover both slates, talk about the stacks, the pitchers I like, the bats I like on each slate. Uh, talk about my 5 plays, I'll give 5 plays for each slate, 5 guys I like uh, that I think I will be putting into my lineups. Uh, but before we do get started, looking at pitcher, we'll start with the early slate. Uh, before we get started looking at the early slate, just make sure you guys drop a like on the video. We we'll definitely appreciate it. Uh, if you are new to the channel and you have not subscribed yet, be sure you do click that subscribe button down below. So that way you won't miss out on any of my new videos. Uh, but yeah, so picture on this early slate, I think it's pretty clear. Uh, I think you just pay up for Corey Kluber. There's really no other studs to consider. Jay Happ, uh, I'm not going to play against the Braves. He's just 10100 That's too much of a price. The Braves don't strike out. We all know this. They're a good offensive team. Uh, I love Kluber here. This is a great matchup with the White Sox. Uh, if you don't play Kluber on this early slate, honestly, you're probably just lighting your money on fire, I feel like. Sure, Kluber could ha baseball could happen and Kluber could go out and, you know, put up a, a poor outing like he did against Minnesota. But I don't really see that happening against this White Sox team. Uh, the White Sox are just so bad. Kluber racked up 35 DraftKings points against them when he faced them earlier this year. Six innings, three hits, uh, got 10 strikeouts, didn't allow a run. Love Kluber here. Top option on this early slate by far. Definitely my number one play. You should be locking him in all your lineups. Uh, I think there is value pitchers that I like, so it's pretty easy to fit him in. Uh, the value pitcher that I really like on the early slate, uh, I think it's Frankie Montes here. 6,700 against the Padres. Uh, Montes, he's been good this year. He had one rough start his last outing against Houston. That was a terrible matchup. Uh, the Astros have been on fire lately. Bad spot for Montes. Definitely struggled there, putting up negative five drafting points. Uh, but you look before that game against the Royals, 23 DK points against the Royals again, 20 DK points, and against the Diamondbacks, 26 DK points. Managed to get 7, 2, and 5 strikeouts in those outings. Uh, this is obviously a great matchup here versus a Padres team that we know strikes out a lot versus righties. Going to be playing the National League in a pitcher's park. Uh, Montes will be able to face the opposing pitcher in the lineup, which is a free strikeout there. Uh, I just really like Montes here. Getting uh, roughed up in that last outing, put his price tag down. He's only 6700 today. I think that is a little bit too cheap. This guy definitely has talent, and this Padres lineup uh, lacks a lot of talent. So Kluber and Montes are kind of the two guys I'm building around on the early slate. That still leaves you decent salary, 3800 remaining per player. Uh, there's value hitters I like. There's hitters I want to pay up for. Uh, so I'll kind of be mixing in a little bit of both with the uh, building around these two pitchers. Uh, but the first guy that I like is at first base, the value play I like here. Justin Smoke at 3,400, really good value option, I feel like, versus Anibal Sanchez. Uh, Anibal Sanchez is a pitcher I've kind of been on lately. Played him in his last start against the Padres, but he's still a pitcher that I don't think is necessarily good. A pitcher I don't mind taking some hitters against. He's had some really good matchups lately. Uh, this is a mediocre matchup, I would say. I'm not playing Anibal here, uh, but I don't think the Blue Jays are like this great offensive team. But there are definitely bats in this lineup that I do want. Uh, obviously, Smoke, we'll talk about Curtis Granderson. He's another one of my five plays. Like Granderson here, uh, Josh Donaldson returns to the lineup. I think he is a good option at third base for 4K. I uh, really like the Blue Jays. They have one of the highest implied run totals on this early slate at 4.7 runs. Uh, right now, as I'm recording this video, not a single team has an implied run total over five runs. The Blue Jays and Indians are kind of leading the slate uh, as of now. The Blue Jays are a team I definitely want exposure to. Uh, and I really like Smoke here, 3,400. Batting from his left side against a pitcher that definitely gives up hard hard contact, will give up some home runs. I think Smoke makes a lot of sense as a value play here. Uh, then my next, op uh, next option in the outfield, I'll go ahead and talk about him. Curtis Granderson, another good value play here, 3,800. That same matchup with Anibal Sanchez. Uh, really like Granderson here. Going to be leading off versus a pitcher, like I said, I don't believe in. A pitcher that does struggle to lefties will give up some hard contact. Uh, I think Granderson, another good cheap option you can consider in the outfield. Wanting to pay up for Kluber, going to need some value bats, and I think that's where Granderson comes in today, him and Smoke uh, from the Blue Jays. And then my final play, uh, sort of a more expensive play, but a guy that I think I can fit in pretty easily today is Michael Brantley. I like Michael Brantley here versus Renato Lopez. Uh, I think Renato Lopez, probably the other pitcher I want to pick on on this early slate. Uh, dude's definitely not a gas can by any means. He's actually shown a lot of upside this year, but this is still an Indians team that just is so good offensively, hits the ball very well at home. Just so much upside in this lineup. So many guys that have power that don't strike out. Lindor, Brantley, Ramirez, these guys don't K. They have so much power. Uh, Yonder Alonso, if you don't want to play Smoke, I think is a good first baseman. Uh, 
to play at 3600 but Michael Brantley, a guy I definitely like, 4600 feel that feel like that's a little bit too cheap. I want some exposure to the Indians. I want some exposure to the Blue Jays. So got a little bit of both in the five plays with two Blue Jays and an Indian. But yeah, guys, these are my five plays for the early slate. Uh, Corey Kluber, Frankie Montes, Justin Smoke, Curtis Granderson, and Michael Brantley. Uh, now we'll quickly talk about some uh, some of the other pitchers on this early slate. We'll talk about stacks and then BVP plays uh, before we move on to the main slate. So the other pitchers I'm kind of looking to target, if you don't want to play these two guys, uh, like I said, I think you should just lock in Kluber. If, but if you're not interested in Montes, some of the other options that we could go to, uh, I think Tyson Ross on the other side of that game is definitely a play here versus Oakland. Good matchup, Oakland team that strikes out, good pitchers park, National League as well. Uh, I think Tyson Ross, 8,100, if you want to go up from Montes to him, I think that makes some sense. Uh, Derek Collin, not a good pitcher, but he's at home in a great pitcher's park versus a terrible Marlins team. So Derek Collin at 7,200, a guy you could consider. Honestly, on the other side of that game, you could probably play Urena as well, 6,500. Uh, but those guys are definitely not like clear options here. I think the clear SP2s are probably Montes and Ross. Especially if you are looking for safety, I think those two guys do provide a lot of safety at SP2. Uh, so pitcher for me, paying up for Kluber, just lock him in. Uh, if you play on FanDuel, just lock Kluber in. Not even sure what his price is on FanDuel, but only being able to play one pitcher over there, uh, you should definitely be building your lineups around Kluber. And then the SP2s, I like Tyson Ross, I think Montas. My top two options, then if you really want the punt, you could definitely go down to Derek Holland and Jose Arena. Uh, but yeah, moving on to stacks and BVP plays. Uh, so I talked about the stacks. It's really the Blue Jays and the Indians. Kind of the two teams I'm focused on. I don't think Tyler Miley is that good of a pitcher, but this Detroit lineup is also not very good either. So I probably won't be on the Tigers, even though Miley is not that great of a pitcher. Really, it's the Blue Jays and Indians. Uh, so now moving on to BVP plays, we'll talk about some of the BVP plays. Uh, on this early slate, well, looks like there's about six or seven of them. We'll just go through all of them real quick. Uh, so two of these, Blue Jays have hit Anna Ball well. Kendrick Morales is 10 for 31 with the home run. And Kevin Pillar, 5 for 12. Uh, Tommy Pham has hit Arietta well, going 5 for 11 with the home run. Jose Abreu does have some decent BVP versus Kluber. It's actually a pretty big sample, 16 for 47. Uh, with five home runs. Tim Anderson also is five for 14 versus Kluber. And then the last two plays, Kike Hernandez, four for 14 with two home runs versus John Lester. And Matt Kemp is three for 11 with the home run versus Lester. Uh, but yeah, guys, those are the BVP plays. We'll move on to PVB. Look at the pitchers that have done well. Uh, just two pitchers that have done well on the early slate, or three actually. Jake Arrieta, Corey Kluber, and John Lester have all done well in the past versus the teams they're facing. Arietta's done well against the Cardinals. Cardinals only hitting him for a 222 average. Uh, I'm not playing Arietta though today. I don't think Arietta is the same guy that he used to be. Corey Kluber, no surprise, has done well against the White Sox. White Sox only hitting Kluber for a 234 average. And then John Lester, uh, he has done well against the pass versus the Dodgers. Dodgers are hitting Lester for a 198 average through 81 ABs. Uh, but yeah, that's it for PVB and BVP on the early slate. Now let's go ahead and move on to the night slate. Look at the seven games for tonight. Do the same thing we did on the early slate. Talk about the pitchers, talk about stacks, the BVP plays, and I will give my five plays for the night slate as well. Uh, so pitcher, a little bit better on this night slate, at least when it comes to options. Uh, I don't think there's like a clear-cut option like there is on the early slate. I think Kluber is such a clear play on the early slate. Here you do have multiple plays. I think Morton and Geo are both options here, but I do lean Charlie Morton. He is definitely my favorite option on the night slate. 12,200 versus the Rays at home. Great matchup here. This Rays team. Definitely a team that strikes out versus right-handed pitching. Uh, and they're just not a good offensive lineup. We look at this projected lineup for the Rays. Uh, they did get Kiermaier back. So he isn't a guy that really strikes out a lot. But still, when you get to the bottom of that lineup with uh, Gomez, Johnny Field, those guys strike out. Adamas has like a 50% K rate. It's a small sample, but that dude's been striking out a ton this year. Uh, Ramos has an increased K rate versus righty. CJ Crone will strike out a lot. Duffy and Kiermaier don't really strike out, but it's definitely like Crone, Adames, Gomez, Field, Ramos. Those are where you really get the Ks from. And like I said, this is a matchup where Morton can rack up strikeouts. He's definitely my favorite option on the uh, main slate. I think Gio, if you want to go there in tournaments, I don't think Gio is really a tournament play, though, just because he's not a guy that has a ton of upside. Rarely does Gio win you a slate, but if you want to get off the Morton, o uh, Morton ownership, uh, Gio is probably your next best option. Either him or David Price you could go to. But if we're just talking about like cash games, safety, uh, I think Morton's definitely the guy you want to pay up for. So the SP2 plays, we'll go ahead and look at these. Uh, I'm going to really be spending a lot of pitcher on this main slate. We'll talk about the SP2 I like. 
there aren't a ton of cheap options I like on this main slate. I think there are guys that could do well. Maybe like Brent Suter against the Pirates could maybe have a decent outing. Uh, maybe Chad Cool against the Brewers, but these are not plays I feel good about. Uh, so I'm really going to be spending a pitcher. I'm going with David Price as my SP2. Uh, that still leaves me 3500 remaining per player when you go Morton and Price. I do like this matchup for David Price. The Minnesota Twins are a team that do, uh, they do strike out a lot versus left-handed pitching. Uh, we saw that lineup they rolled out versus Chris Sale was pretty disgusting, honestly. They roll out that same lineup. This will be a great spot for David Price, a matchup where, or a spot where he can definitely rack up strikeouts. I like pairing him with Morton on this slate. I just don't like the SP2 options. The, really, the only guy I like besides Price that's a little cheaper is uh, Los Sega, or however you say his name, Jonathan Los Sega. He looked really good in his first outing. Gets a matchup with the Mariners. That's not a matchup I love, but a lot of the SP2s, I don't really like their matchups. And even the ones that do have decent matchups just aren't really good pitchers, like Chad Cool, not a guy I really believe in. The Brewers, we've seen them at, uh, seen them at times really be pesky this year. And Cool definitely worries me here. Don't know if I want to go to him. Uh, Jake Junis, another guy that has a decent strikeout matchup, but a pitcher that's been so up and down lately. Not sure if I want to consider Jake Junis. Uh, so if you're not playing David Price, really the only guy I like is Losega, and that's really it. It's really Morton, Geo, Losega, and Price, the top four options. I uh, hate not giving value plays, but there just really aren't value plays I like at pitcher. I could see some of these guys having a decent start, but it's going to be hard to pick which ones. Uh, so many of these guys just have so much blow-up potential. So on this main slate, uh, main slate, I'm kind of looking to really spend at pitcher and just take the safety and look for the value bats. There are some cheap uh, value hitters that I do like. Uh, we'll start off at first base with a value hitter, a really cheap option here. Hunter Dozier is only 3K today. Uh, he is projected back cleanup versus Austin Bibben, uh, Bibbins Dirks. I think that's how you say his name. Bibbins Dirks, not really a pitcher. I'm afraid to take some bats against. I think this Texas and Rangers game is a game you really want to look to for value bats. A lot of these hitters are not going to be very attracting to roster. Like Paulo Orlando, you're not really going to be uh, thrilled to roster that guy, but he's 2,400. He's projected about fifth versus a pretty bad pitcher. Uh, the Royals do have a five implied run total today. On the other side, you got cheap bats like Beltre, Odor versus Junis. you got uh, Andrus batting second, 3,700. There's some value there as well. Uh, I think this is a game you're really going to look to for value. I like Hunter Dozier. He's only 3K. He's dirt cheap. He's bat He should be batting fourth. This guy definitely has some power. Could take Austin Bibbins' dirt deep. Uh, so I like him as a value option. Really looking for as much value as I can get. Uh, I think that's where he comes in at first base. Uh, then my next play from that game, Adrian Beltre, 3,600. I like this matchup for him versus Junis. Uh, Junis is definitely a pitcher that struggles to right-handed bats, gives up power to righties. Uh, Beltre still has some power, although it has sort of diminished. Uh, still some power in that bat, three home runs this year. Uh, been definitely good like when it comes to making contact, putting the ball in play. Got a 322 average on the year. Do like Beltre here. He's 3,600. He's another really cheap option that makes sense. Uh, if you're wanting to really go the way I am and taking all the safety you can at pitcher, you're going to need these cheap bats. You're, if you're paying up for pitcher, you're really going to need these cheap bats. Uh, so that's where Dozier and Beltre both come in. Very cheap options from that Texas KC game. And then my final play is in the outfield. Uh, I do like the Astros here versus Nathan Eovaldi. So at 3,400, another cheap option. Josh Reddick versus Eovaldi. I uh, like Reddick here. I like the Astros. Uh, it's really going to be pretty much impossible to play the Astros, like the expensive guys with Price and with Morton. But you can look to the bottom of that lineup with Josh Reddick, uh, Tony Kemp, Brian McCann. I know it's not very fun rostering guys at the bottom of that lineup, but you do get really good savings on their, on them uh off the, like the expensive options, the top options at the top. Those guys are probably still going to get at least, uh, obviously at least three, possibly four at-bats. Uh, so like Reddick, Brian McCann, Kemp, if you want to get that value there, you definitely can. They got a five implied run total for today, the Astros do. Uh, and I like Reddick here. He's 3,400, dirt cheap value. Getting the platoon split, he's always hit righty as well. Uh, so these are my five plays for the main slate guys. Charlie Morton, David Price, Hunter Dozier, Adrian Beltre, and Josh Reddick. Uh, now we will quickly talk about some of the stacks and BVP plays on the night slate before we do get out of here. Uh, so stacks for me, really, if you're paying up for pitcher, you're going to be looking to this Rangers-Royals game, uh, especially for value plays. I don't know if you're really going to like load up on these teams, but picking off value here with Andrus, with Beltre, Odor, on the other side with Dozier, Orlando, Alex Gordon, you need these cheap options. Uh, I think runs are going to be scored in this game, so I definitely like the value plays here. 
Not sure if I'm full stacking these teams, but definitely getting exposure to both sides uh, with the value options. Like getting some of the value from the Astros if you can. Uh, the Yankees, I think, are definitely in play versus King Felix. Uh, I think King Felix is old, doesn't have it anymore. In Yankee Stadium here, Good Hitters Park, uh, guys like Greg Bird, 4,100, Aaron Hicks, 4K. Uh, we've seen Hicks lead off uh, the last few games. If he leads off again at 4K, definitely a great value play if you can fit him in with Price and Morton. Uh, and I think that really is it for the stacks. Obviously, the Nationals versus Cashner are going to be great. It's a great stack, but paying up for Morton and Price, going to be hard to play these guys. Maybe like Defoe, Severino you could go to, but those really aren't the tracking plays. You want to get the Rendones, the Murphys, the Harpers in your lineup, but going to be pretty impossible to do that if you play Morton Price. But maybe if you take a shot on like Chad Cool, take a shot on Suter, or even if you don't play Morton and you go down to Geo, uh, maybe you get exposure to the Nationals. Uh, but yeah, that's it for stacks, guys. Now, quickly talking about the BVP plays on the main slate before we do get out of here. Uh, got about six or seven of them. Uh, six or seven of them on the main slate. Looks like Geo has struggled against Danny Valencia. Valencia's hit Geo five for twelve uh, versus him. Orlando Arcia five for twelve versus Chad Cool. Brett Gardner thirteen for thirty six with a home run versus King Felix. Bryce Harper is five for eleven versus Cashner. Murphy is 6-for-12 with the home run versus Kastner, and Anthony Rendon, 5-for-12 with the home run versus Kastner. Uh, Josh Reddick got some BVP versus Evaldi. He's 5-for-11. And then lastly, Carlos Gomez, 6-for-16 with the home run versus Charlie Morton. Uh, and then the PVB plays, the pitcher that have done well. Chad Cool has done well in the past against the Brewers. Uh, Brewers only hitting him for a 2 11 average through 90 ABs. I think Chad Cool, if you're going to really go cheap at pitcher, I think he's probably the best option, honestly. At home, Pitchers Park uh, could definitely be a play. And then the pitchers that have done poorly, Andrew Kastner and King Felix, have both struggled in their matchups. Kastner has struggled against the Nationals. The Nationals have hit him for a 3.38 average. And King Felix struggled against the Yankees. The Yankees have hit him for a 2.92 average. Uh, but yeah, guys, I think that's it for BVP and PVB on the main slate, the night slate. Uh, I think that is it for the video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it helped you. Uh, if you did enjoy, just make sure you click that like button before you get out of here. Make sure you subscribe as well before you get out of here. And if you do have any questions, like always, you can hit me up on Twitter at the DFS underscore go or feel free to leave a comment down below. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And good luck tonight on this slate, guys. Peace.